That five-year-old girl has been missing since June 15th. Her mother, Candace, says that they were planting flowers at the front of the house with grandma when Summer decided to go back inside the house. Now that is where her three brothers were on the internet, watching TV, and mom says she then came inside herself and asked the boys, where's Summer? Where's your sister? And those brothers said uh, she'd gone downstairs to play, but uh, nobody could find her in that house. Here is Summer's father, Don Wells, back in June, describing what happened next. So when her mother come in, she says, where's Summer? She went down in the basement. She didn't answer, so she went down there and she was gone. So she went out the basement door, which was unlocked, and we haven't seen her since. Just some bad person grabbed her, but we have no idea. Local police and the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation spent weeks and weeks searching that property around the house, even bringing in the dive teams to check the bodies of water as well as issuing an Amber Alert. But here we are, five months later, still no sign of Summer Wells. I wanna bring in News Nation's Brian Enton, who is at the Sheriff's Department in Rogersville, Tennessee. That's where Summer Wells went missing. Okay, Brian Enton, you do this better than anybody else. Just get me up to speed on the investigation. Where are we at? Uh, well, unfortunately, basically nothing has changed in five months since Summer Wells went missing. I was inside the building behind me, the sheriff's office today, sat down with the sheriff, and that was probably the most jaw-dropping thing I heard since we got here. I asked him, since Summer went missing five months ago, what sort of progress have you made? Are there any new nuggets? Is there any lead? Is there anything? And he said flat out no. They have no new leads, and he said everything is on the table right now, and every single person involved in this case he considers a person of interest. Well, that's upsetting. Uh, you know, kids and people don't just go, you know, vanish. They don't just go poof. They're somewhere. It's whether they're alive or dead somewhere. And, you know, we have lots of tools to figure that out. Go back to the, to the dad for a minute, because we talked about mom and grandma out planting flowers and the boys inside doing, you know, what boys do on their phones and, and TV. Where was dad and what's his story? So the dad, Don Wells, he was at work. He works as a drywaller. He was not there when Summer went missing. He says he got the call and he rushed home and he saw his other kids who have since been taken away by, by social services, by the way, because I'm not sure if you've seen the inside of their house, Ashley. It, it was a real mess when all of this went down. Uh, very, very unsafe for children. Uh, but the dad was not there, uh, comes home, sees his other boys out looking for Summer. Uh, and basically, you summed it up, the mom claims uh, that Summer was outside, went back in the house. The grandmother was also on the property. Uh, Summer suddenly goes missing. They're looking around and she literally vanishes. What the parents believe is that she may have wandered out of the house. They say that she was abducted. Uh, and that is what they think, either kidnapped or abducted, and that she went down a very steep ravine behind the house. But I was out at the house today and yesterday. The ravine is so steep, it's in the middle of nowhere. Um, and, and the sheriff says it. I mean, it's, it's not, they don't believe at this point there's any evidence to, uh, to show that this was an abduction uh, because it's just, you know, it's so strange that this would happen at this one house in the middle of nowhere on, on the side of a hill in Tennessee. So I'm just going to go back like a gazillion years, uh, you know, like 20 years to Elizabeth Smart going missing. I said the same thing. I was outside, you know, the Smart's house and I said, you know, little girls just don't vanish from their beds. I smell a rat. And there was a ravine going the other way, a steep upward ravine outside back of their house. And it turned out Elizabeth was up there and she could hear people screaming for her, calling out her name. And she was captured by two evil boogeymen, a man and a woman who kept her for nine months. And so I've changed my tune a lot on the fact that, you know, a weird, completely unbelievable abductions, they do happen. They happen to Mark Kloss. They happen to Ed Smart. They do happen. But let's go back to that house. You said inside it's, it's not, not a good scene. But is there anything that investigators or even the parents can point to that suggests Someone came in that house and somehow drove up that big circular driveway without them seeing and then somehow took took Summer off into those, I guess, thick 
woods where they wouldn't have their car? I mean, none of it really logistically makes sense from a pragmatic you know, state. So what's the theory on how someone might have abducted her out of the house? Well, according to the parents, when the search dogs were out there, they traced a scent from Summer down the steep ravine, not, not near the driveway, but down the steep ravine out to a more of a main road below. Uh, so the parents' working theory is there may have perhaps been a car parked down below that someone got Summer up by the house, took her down this steep ravine, got her in the car, uh, and then took off. And you're right, anything is possible. The sheriff said anything is possible. Uh, he said he has hope that she could still be alive somewhere. That's why we're hoping people take a look at her picture. Could she still be in the state of Tennessee? Could she have been human trafficked uh, in another part of the country? Uh, he says anything is possible at this point. Oh, I just hate even thinking that. Like, I don't want my head to go into that space at all. You know, don't, I, maybe I'm Pollyanna about this, but you say traffic, and I just think, God, she's five. Okay, so the red truck, the, the business about the red truck, um, you know, they, they're saying it's like a 1998 to 2000 maroon or red Toyota Tacoma. That's pretty specific, with a bed ladder rack along with white buckets in the truck bed. Who saw that and was so smart to get all that information and then remember it and then actually regurgitate it? Whose information is that? So it was a witness in the area who believes they saw that red truck. Another neighbor also says that she thinks that she heard a scream around the time Summer went missing. So of course, those were some of the things we brought up to the sheriff today. He said, yes, they're looking for the red truck, but he wanted to be clear, that's just something else they're looking into. They're not sure if that is really someone connected to the case. Could it have just been someone driving by? Was there even really a red truck? Uh, they don't know. They want people to be on the lookout, but it's not like they've got some kind of concrete lead that there is an abductor who is in that red truck. He says they're not anywhere near close to that right now. Okay, so you had a chance to talk to Don Wells. That This is what I really want to get into, uh, Brian, and we've got several bits and pieces, but I want to start at the top with, with the question about, um, I, I don't know, I think he's alluding to the idea that maybe, maybe uh, Summer's mom doesn't hang with a good crowd, but g g dig into that for me and, and give me what it was he said about that. Yeah, let me set this up for you a little bit, Ashley. Um, the Wells, Candace, and Don were on Dr. Phil last week. Don, the dad, says Candace did not want to go on TV. They had to really push her to fly out to California and go on the show and say that it was in the best interest of summer to get the word out. So they go on the show, and at one point during the Dr. Phil interview, when they're asking her questions, she breaks down, she takes the microphone off, and she leaves. A lot of people following this case have questioned, including the sheriff himself, does Candace Wells know something about what happened? Not necessarily something that she did to her daughter, but does she know something about what happened that she is perhaps not sharing with authorities? Uh, and that sort of was the basis for, for my questioning of Don Wells. Take a listen. You know. Is it possible that something happened to Summer that Candace knows about that's not her fault, but she is just nervous now and feeling bad about it? Well, no, because she knows better. She would know to go directly to law enforcement and accidents one time. She would never do something like that. She knows better than that. I know it happens. It does happen with people, uh, but no. She would go directly to law enforcement. She'd call an ambulance right away, number one, you know, do anything, she would freak out. I mean, uh, Could she have gotten herself into a situation where she, it wasn't her fault, but... No. You know what I mean? No. No. No, she was, uh, she's a good mother. She, um, she loves her children. She's not going to allow any situation like that. The biggest make sh mistake she might have made is maybe choosing some wrong friends, which is, you know, it happens. So, Brian, what did that mean? Sometimes she chooses some wrong friends. That, that was kind of a sketchy thing to say. 
Yeah, and for people who follow this case, and there are a lot of people online who follow this case very closely, that is what they picked up on. He has not said that before. And the question is, what did he mean by wrong friends? I pushed him on that. He wouldn't really uh, elaborate and sort of change the subject. But yes, uh, that was the interesting part to us. And even the sheriff today, when I interviewed him, said, yeah, that, that was interesting. We haven't necessarily heard that before. Uh, you just mentioned something I think is super important, and the fact is that uh, the kids were removed from the home. The other three brothers were removed from the home. Uh, g give me a little bit more on that, because that doesn't just happen because one child goes missing. Like, the, the Smarts kids weren't all removed from, from their home. There were five kids. They stayed with the Smarts, the other four. So why were these kids taken out? That's a very good question. Bottom line, we don't know. It's all confidential because they're underage, and the case has actually been put under a gag order. Uh, we weren't even able to ask Don Wells about that, or he could get in trouble. So we don't know exactly why they were taken away. Interesting. Okay, and then just the last question, um, and it's about, I think it was only like two weeks ago, you alluded to the, the, the you know, the criminal backgrounds of, of mom and dad. I mean, dad's got multiple felonies. He served prison time. Uh, for drugs and burglaries. He's had multiple parole violations. Mom uh, has criminal record in the state of Wisconsin. Most recently, she pleaded guilty to misdemeanor domestic abuse in, in 03. But then dad, it appears, may have gotten a DUI just like two weeks ago. What's up? What's going on? So he claims that he, um, you know, is stressed about the case, obviously having a hard time handling his daughter being away and made a mistake. Um, and again, if you go and you listen to some of these YouTube shows that he comes on in the middle of the night, early in the morning, you can clearly tell that he sounds very different than the man that I interviewed in the afternoon yesterday. Uh, so there are definitely some demons there. And I think that this family is obviously having a hard time with what they're going through with their daughter being gone. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.